Hello, uh, this is Jay Rodman. Welcome back to my playthrough of Bard's Tale 3. <laughs> and here I am struggling with the audio. Hold on a second. Okay, um, so I'm pretty much right where we left things. Uh, from the previous episode? Episode... Oh. 68. Um, so this would be 69, I suppose. And uh, we're continuing to explore Pharaoh Fist's realm in Canestia. Uh, the first thing I think I want to do is a really boring task of making sure there's nothing special in the middle of this giant hall. So the first thing I did is try to find out if this is a anti-magic zone right here. And the result I got was basically yes. This one I tried already assuming is anti-magic. And I'm wrong. So... But there is one in this row somewhere. But that also means... I can find... I can turn on my second sight. To better determine what is where. We did find out that the something, the nearest something is here. One. I'm not seeing anything inconsistent yet. Two. Well, there's one fact. There's a spinner over here somewhere. And almost certainly it's here, because I don't think we saw it from against the wall. Nope. Same thing here. Incidentally, looking this way, we can sense the special something we can't sense the anti magic. So the anti magic we're looking here, the anti magic must be further away and the spinner is closer. east from here, we can still spin the spinner. I'm not sure why I didn't notice it my first pass. Okay, and from here we can't sense anything in any direction. That's curious. We go one more south. Okay, so the trap I sensed here was not actually here at all. It was, um, here. I guess that's not a big difference. It's a difference. Okay, from this place we can sense a anti-magic here. Is 
is this inconsistent? I don't think we could sense a s something special. Something special before. Which is probably over there. Meanwhile, I've let my light spell run out. Although I wasn't really relying on it for anything. Okay, now let's step forward and find out if my guess for where this anti-magic was located was accurate. And I'm going to run away from this fight. Okay, so the anti-magic location guess was accurate. This one too. Here, there's not one, as I thought. Okay, so here's our spe here's our special message that describes this hall. It's kind of funny. You don't get to find out what the hall looks like until you find the magic spot to stand. Maybe there's a plaque. Okay, this castle's the castle's grand reception room looms high over your head. Its vaulted ceiling lost in the dim light above you. Strewn throughout, you see torn and shattered bodies of dwarves and strange machines. So, my interpretation that dwarves and machines are fighting wasn't a big stretch, but seems to be borne out right now. Okay, so I have my uh, description recorded. So I think that the majority of the rest of the spaces here are going to be anti-magic ones. For example, this one. Makes it kind of hard to for certain, verify things like the locations of spinners. But, yeah, this is where I, I kind of say, I guess I'm going to give up on knowing exactly where every last spinner is, because um, well, I could go insane trying to do that. Okay, so at least uh, we visited all the squares and verified, well, all of these anti-magics. I bet this one's anti-magic as well. Maybe I forgot to notate it. Okay, so 
with that task out of the way, I'm going to leave this area. Basically going this way. I find it a little suspicious that I don't see an odd in front of me, but I could have misjudged where it is exactly. So I guess I just got confirmation that this odd does exist. It's just um, in a different position. Probably right on top of that 5. Which is awkward, because I want to have that square have a 5 notification. Or 5 mm, label, that's what these are called. Not a odd label. I guess I can put the, use the flower. One, two, one, two, three, four. So I think our room is going to turn out to be a long, skinny rectangle like this. That that is really hard to read. I am going to live with it for the moment and deal with it later. I don't really know whether this trap is here or here. I guess for the moment I'm putting it in both spots. I guess this fight I'm going to keep in. I don't really know why. Just because we got different enemies. Cold manglers. Uh, the Chain Vipers are not new, but I don't actually know what they do yet. I'm going to Wither Fist the large group of them. The Involtron does some kind of um, group-oriented attack, which I'm assuming counts as a spell, but I don't actually know that. So the Chain Vipers, okay, they do moderately low damage, but they seem to hit very reliably. And they're definitely inflicting poison, which is more of a nuisance than anything. I feel like I should respond to it, but I don't feel like it's important or urgent. I'm having our rogue attack the Involtron. Uh, Eleanor is just going to defend. Griselda will cast Restoration to deal with healing and poison, and then I'll just use 
my master wand on the group of vipers. I guess I can speed this up. I keep thinking of Voltron when they say in Voltron. It was current. Voltron was a 80s creation. I think it was an American creation. Uh, sort of uh, pastiche reassembling of a re original Japanese cartoon. Anyway, um, or maybe it was called Vol Voltron in the Japanese inst uh, variation. Japanese original, I suppose. But it was it was in it was on uh, the cartoons every week or every day. I don't really know which. It's hard to imagine in they they named something in Voltron without realizing. Okay, so I have a spell wavering to the. East at the full at the the furthest range of detection. So nothing was really in here other than some random fights. attack the gold manglers first from the theory I don't know what they do so therefore they're the most dangerous to me because I don't know what they do um, and some fatal fist we're just gonna pound things down mm, I don't think there's really an additional threat that's large Of the monsters that I've seen, so somehow this, this, uh, well, the pictures that we've seen, because there's many foes that share an image. This thing with the swinging blades really just, cre you know, s seems scary to me. Like, I don't want to imagine having a thing with the swinging knife blades coming at me. A blood mesh robe. And the usual problem with Barge Tail 3 looting, I've already forgotten who picked it up. I want to try it on. I don't need a shorthand amulet.
Okay, so it was on Griselda. She's got negative 21 armor class, and if I equip this, negative 19. So it's the same armor class as the Magician's Robe or whatever, which is definitely worse than the Adamant Bracers. Is it a usable item? No. So it seems... I don't know, unless it has a special effect. Perhaps I'll wear it for a period of time and see if anything interesting happens. And look, going through the door to the west, it looks like we're in another boxy room. Poster? Okay, well, I'm going to assume that these are not exciting, and I'm going to cut this fight. Okay, so it turns out that uh, this was not an innocuous fight, in that toasters can possess you. So here you have Lady Oakenshield possessed by a toaster. I I don't know if I can imagine a more embarrassing fate. What what happens? Does it like shoot out its electrical prongs into your thigh? I anyway. Um. Okay. So if we have people being uh possessed by toasters. Then I think I need to pull the toasters into range in a um, prompt manner. Well, my restoration landed too late, and Lillian Duspray is dead, but that's not really a big setback anymore. I'll cast uh, Grave... Do I even need that? No, I don't need that. Um, well, I'm going to cast Grave Robber anyway, because I want to have Griselda cast Melee Men to try to pull in one of these toasters. And I guess I forgot to dispossess Lady Oak Shield. Well, one toaster was pulled in, and so we can kill that one. They do pretty respectable damage. Especially from 90 feet away. Okay, I don't... I'm, I'm starting to become annoyed. I guess uh, my general here spells... Cure insanity, but not possession. I guess my memory is uh, a little off. Um, so, I've been doing the wrong thing. But, we can do the right thing now. By dispossessing Lady Oak Shield rather deliberately.
I guess it's like a toaster as in it's going to toast you. Like it's going to burn you. It's a very slangy uh, use of, of toast other than like you put in sliced bread and, and get out slightly cooked sliced bread. Like it's a fire breathing machine, basically. But I didn't. I don't know. Do do fire breathing machines really work at significant distance? Maybe ninety feet is not significant distance. I guess this whole combat system, um, kind of breaks down for high-powered weaponry. Like if you were using rifles and stuff, ninety feet would not feel appropriate. But that's the furthest distance it's got. So it's going to be the one that has to stand in. Okay, so we do indeed have those odd, well, some of the odds on this, this uh, corridor. And to the west we have some somethings. Which I think somehow I suspect are going to turn out to be hit point drains, but I guess we can just go find out. Yep, hit point drain it is. Oh, just one. Just a little hit point drain. You wouldn't want to get carried away. It also seems that when I estimated the size of the level, I was a little off. Because the edge is here. So, all in all, we have a 18 uh, size area north to south, or south to north, whichever. The east-west distance is still a little under... under... under known? Unknown. It's still unknown. So looking up here, we can detect uh, a special and so on, but we're just detecting those which we already know about. From here we can detect a trap, but again, already knew about that one. Okay, so from here we can't detect odd and we can't detect a trap, but I think odd allows, you know, the degraded sight can still see traps. Brass clankers. Kinetic Kid, these are new. I'm going to attack the Kinetic Kid, assuming 
a, a lone enemy is likely to be a stronger enemy than one of several in a pack. I don't know if that's true, but it's my operating theory. Well, the Brass Clankers seem to have pretty good spell resistance. Actually, everything in here seems to have pretty good spell resistance. Some of them just better than others. Come on, just, just, wow, 193 damage. I feel like when they get down to two or three enemies, they should just die. I don't know where I get that from. It's like they should surrender and fall over and be dead. Okay, so this odd is misplaced. It's really in the corridor. And this room overall is shaped like this. I kind of hate recasting my spells, but it's just w just the odd, so I should suck it up, walk through it, and recast it. From here, I can see that there's another whoop, another door. Two after the first. But also that this wall is just this this room. I don't know that this corridor opens up into a larger room. Two to the east is basically what I'm trying to say. Um, so get rid of this trap. And fight these off screen. Okay, and uh, those robots are down. And this wasn't just a trap location, it was a trap and an explosion, which I don't currently have a way to note. <laughs> I sent that keystroke to the wrong program, but I'm going to write it as explosion right on top of that trap. And another. I 
feel like this is, um... I don't know, this is like the kind of... Uh... Place build-out I would expect from a 1980s Dungeons & Dragons adventure. Like a whole series of small rooms. All rel very, very boxily defined. And often with fairly little happening in any of them. Though actually that would typically have um, at least a description for each one of them. And I'm going to kill these where you can't see them. And I still don't know what an Alpha Scrambler does. But I'm afraid to find out. It sounds like some kind of, like, ROT13 application, maybe Base64. I'm gonna run from these, that's a little too much. And unsurprisingly, another explosion in this area. I don't, I don't know if there's going to be a uh, flavor explanation for all the explosions, but it's a local consistency. So I'm not sure why I thought there was a anti-magic to the east here. One possibility is... Oh, look. My uh, sorcerer's sight fell off. That's, that's why I'm getting all this inconsistency. So from right here, detect the anti-magic zone, should be over here. And from here we can detect one as well, which I will guess is here, but it's definitely less certain. From here we can detect the spinner. that I guessed earlier, and stepping forward to something. Okay, so... Oh, that's interesting. From this location, I can see a very, a very specific little slice of information. One, two, three, four. These walls over there. From this location, uh, I can detect a trap, which is going to be one, two, three, right there. can also detect a spinner behind this door. I don't know which way I want to go. Here's the overall dungeon layout so far. 
have this kind of desire to head east and deal with this anti-magic zone now. There's certainly a lot of anti-magic on this level. So, turning east, and my spell's wavering. One more. Okay, so... This square beyond... does not have anti-magic. Looking north... can see a dead end. Looking east... See the expected continuation of this wall. But I'm going to step in whoop, here, verifying that the anti magic continues, and also there. Assuming I'm out of it. Turn all our spells again. Okay, there is a passageway here. Do you intend to take it? I'm gonna mark that with. You know, I can maybe just make it a door. I'm gonna double mark it. Um, I'm actually sort of cheating here by making mapping decisions based on knowledge I haven't shown in the game yet. But... We'll see them soon enough. Okay, so I've been all around here. I don't know if I've been in the middle. Now I have. Um... I'm going to do one little more room. I'm going to tuck into this corner, and as if we needed a safe place to end the episode. Looks like we're going to get one more fight. Uh, nothing special, so this is going to be chopped out. And you can see Elena's down at the bottom of the party because um, two silver droids hit her for uh, about 200 each, which is certainly enough to do her in. That was all in one round. Thieves' Dart. Um, thieves' Dart could be useful. A familiar figurine I am suspicious is useful for more than just summoning. I'm going to hand it off to a mage. Okay, so we've explored this little 2x2 two two room. Here's our progress in exploring the very first area of Kinestia. Uh, I guess we can see the end of this space here. It's two more over, so uh, we know that we can bring this into and expand this by two and get a correct map grid. So that makes more sense. It turned it seems to be square at 18 by 18. Definitely didn't look it on the screen. Okay, so with that in mind, it seems like we're more than halfway done through this level, but not a lot more than halfway. 
Still a long way to go. Um, see you next time as we continue to map out Ferrofist Realm.